say enough, enough. for two generations. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstruck. Thanks for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22 says a good man say a good man a good man. a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children say his children's children, his children's children. who would that be his grandchildren. his grandchildren so that's two generations say two generations. two generations that means when you leave you've departed and you're going to leave an inheritance to not only your children which you should do but to their children say enough, enough. For, two for two generations and if you've got a lot of children and a lot of grandchildren mm -hmm. you better have a lot to leave as an inheritance yeah. is this verse of scripture true yes. Yes. yes this verse of scripture is true second corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 says all the promises of god are yes and amen is this a promise of god yes yes so it's true and it's already been answered yes mm -hmm. by god are you here yes. if you believe this verse of scripture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you my friend are in a different class of believer than 99 percent of the believers that are on the face of this earth right now now if you're in a different class than 99 percent what percent does that make you one percent uh, right sadly most christians explain this verse of scripture away as if it meant something else have you heard this before they would explain it away and say that it's somehow a spiritual inheritance second timothy chapter one and verse five we see paul speaking to timothy here when i call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother lois and thy mother eunice and i am persuaded that in thee also so you can call that some type of a, a spiritual inheritance right mm -hmm. passed down for two generations say two generations. two generations that's fine i see that right and others would say that it's we're talking about a physical inheritance passed down traits physical traits that are passed down have you seen this before mm -hmm. some things in you are a little bit like your grandparents physical traits passed down and a lot of christians will go on and on ad nauseum on how there's some kind of a generational curse that's passed down from generation to generation to which i say you need to get saved christ has redeemed us from the curse Amen. of the law Amen. but yes there are genetic predispositions are you here yes. but that's not what this verse is talking about when the bible says you are to leave an inheritance the good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children that's not what he's talking about is spiritual and somehow genetic predispositions that are passed down he's talking about you leaving money to your children and your children's children that means enough financially to make your children and your children's children comfortable the good man that would be good man some of our parents left us nothing are you here don't get mad at me does that make them bad no but they could have done better why is it so why does it get so quiet quiet when you say stuff like that they could have done better and it's certainly not good 
because the good left an inheritance to their children and their children's children boy people should let me in their church so I can preach this stuff <laughs> but if you believe like I said if you believe this verse of Scripture then you will do better you listen you will do good and what is the doing good here leaving an inheritance to your children's children are you here can you hear it yeah. now last week's message we talked about speaking and believing you have to believe things and then speak them Psalms 116 verse 9 I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living where is the land of the living right here. right here on earth very good if you're dead well that's not the land of the living who is the Lord God in the earth today Holy the Holy Ghost so who are you going to be walking with the Holy Ghost. with whom are you going to be walking the Holy Ghost. for those grammar police out there of which I am one <laughs> yeah so he says verse 9 I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living we know that that's the Holy Ghost and that is in the earth while we are alive and then he says I believed therefore have I spoken I believed what I believe that I'm walking with the Lord God Holy Ghost in the earth in the land of the living do you believe that mm -hmm. well if you believe that I believed therefore have I spoken if you believe you're walking with the Holy Ghost in the land of the living mm -hmm. you will speak if you believe you speak and it's how we walk with God in the earth but this is a specific kind of speaking or saying that I'm talking about Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth if it's not out of your mouth what is it it's in your mouth it shall not depart from being in your mouth meaning you're gonna say it yeah. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night now the literal word for meditate is to mutter to say it say to meditate, to meditate. is to say it and how long are you gonna do that you're gonna do it day and night so this the Word of God is gonna be in your mouth not out of your mouth it's gonna be in your mouth and you're gonna say it day and night that thou mayest who's the one that mayest the one who does the first part of that verse who puts the word in his mouth day and night that thou mayest observe to do or see how to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success so here we see God told Joshua to mutter to speak his word day and night that's all the time then he would observe he would see how to do See, that's the problem a lot of people don't prosper because they don't see how to do and observe at least the way I interpret the word observe it's from an outside perspective you're observing it right you're seeing how it's done say I'm seeing, I'm seeing. How, it's done. how it's done how did you get there to seeing how it's done according to this verse of scripture by speaking it as you begin to speak it and speak it and speak it and speak it you begin to see and observe how it's done how what's done how it's done for you how you do it you begin to see how you do it listen then you will see yourself doing it say I will see, I will see myself, myself doing it doing, it. doing what prospering and being a success when I speak the Word of God specifically concerning prosperity and success I will begin to see and observe myself doing it you got to hear this you will see yourself do it 
very biblical joseph remember him yes. joseph saw his brothers bowing down to him you remember that genesis 37 9 and then what happened after seeing himself doing it mm -hmm. it came to pass he had the word of god which came to him and he began to see himself doing it and it came to pass jacob saw how to prosper when laban had stolen his wages once again mm -hmm. we see that once they'd made an arrangement about jacob's wages jacob was going to get the spotted and striped mm -hmm. cattle and sheep and goats so what does laban do early in the morning before anyone was up he took all of the striped and speckled sheep and goats and cattle and left a day's journey though he stole from him again mm -hmm. well let's see what jacob did jacob verse 37 and jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and peeled white streaks in them and made the white appear which was in the rods verse 38 and he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters of the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink that they should conceive when they came to drink verse 39 and the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring straight speckled and spotted mm -hmm. so jacob just has solid covered sheep and cattle and goats but he takes some rods and he he peels some streaks in them and some spots in them puts them down into mm -hmm. say down into, down into down into the bottom of the watering trough so that when the sheep and the cattle and the goats came and they looked into the watering trough what did they see they saw themselves say they saw themselves they saw themselves with spots and with streaks and with white patches on them mm -hmm. they saw themselves differently and then when they did that they began to have offspring mm -hmm. that were streaked and spotted and white the way they saw themselves verse 43 and the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants men servants and camels and asses so it worked right well how do you suppose jacob came you think he was just this brilliant guy that came up with this idea he saw how to do it and how did he see how to do it let's look over here genesis 31 and verse 10 and it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that i lifted up mine eyes and behold i saw in a dream and behold the rams which leapt upon the cattle were ring straked speckled and grizzled and the angel of god spake unto me in a dream where did he get this idea from first he saw how to do it then he saw himself doing it are you getting this yes. mm -hmm. i could go on and on abraham god said to abram behold i have made thee behold means what look see i have made thee a father of many nations god was telling abraham by the words he said to see himself differently mm -hmm. when abram did that he became abraham the father of many nations the image that's in the spoken word of god is what you must behold observe and see that's how you do it and that's how you see yourself doing it the image of the spoken word changed the earthly reality so where did the provision come from it came out of the spoken word first of all they had to hear the word so it had to be in the word the provision came out of the spoken word there's a whole kingdom behind the veil of every spoken word a lot of people don't know this yet but when you speak the word you begin to see the word and then out of the kingdom comes the provision of that word 
for you do you suppose Jesus knew this John chapter 4 verse 32 and he said unto them I have meat to eat that you know not of Jesus had a provision listen Jesus had a provision that they knew nothing about they did not know of it now we're gonna see Jesus proving it John chapter 6 Jesus will now prove that he had something they didn't know of or where to get meat they didn't know where to get it verse 5 when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw the great company come unto him he saith unto Philip whence shall we buy bread that these may eat and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what he would do how did Jesus know what he would do he saw himself doing it Luke chapter 9 verse 16 then he Jesus took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up into heaven where did the provision come from, from heaven. Jesus looked into heaven and out of that provision came enough food for everybody to eat with some left over this is how Jesus he knew what he would do because he saw himself doing it where did the provision come from out of the spoken word and out of the kingdom of heaven Jesus preached the kingdom of God say he preached it, he preached it. when you preach something what are you doing you're speaking words you're speaking God's words you're preaching words of the kingdom of God where the provision come from out of the spoken word and out of the kingdom of God Luke chapter 4 and verse 43 and he said unto them I must preach the kingdom of God unto other cities also for therefore am I sent Jesus went forth and preached the kingdom of God he spoke the words of the kingdom of God where the provision come from from the words of the kingdom of God so there must be provision in the words of the kingdom of God is this that difficult yeah. so the kingdom of God is in the spoken words <laughs> the most valuable thing I own is the ability to speak God's words out my mouth can you see that where's the provision there's a whole kingdom behind every spoken word and I don't mean an imaginary kingdom I mean there is a kingdom of whatever that word is you're saying hast thou not known hast thou not heard Daniel chapter 4 verse 26 thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee after that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule your kingdom say my kingdom, my kingdom will be sure unto you when you know the heavens do rule what if you don't know it then it's not sure yet the kingdom shall be sure unto thee after thou shalt have known that where's the provision kingdom of heaven through the word spoken mm -hmm. say kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven. Through, the word spoken. through the word spoken thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee after that that what knowing that the heavens do rule how are you going to get to know this it will be by speaking and speaking his word you must know this you must go here as in heaven so on earth Jesus prayed thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven we call it that way yeah well, what do you say what do you say 
well proverbs 10 22 says the blessing of the lord it makes rich he adds no sorrow with it so what do i say the blessing of the lord makes me rich and adds no sorrow with it what do i say the blessing of the lord makes me rich adds no sorrow with it what do i see i begin to see when i say it mm -hmm. is this too difficult yeah. when i say it i begin to see the blessing of the lord making me rich adding no sorrow with it it changes the image of me into the thing said i begin to see how to do it i begin to see myself that way you say this you see this and you are converted into the thing said you are transformed into the thing said you become one who's blessed of the lord made rich no sorrow added what does that look like and it'll be a little bit different for every person but it'll be it will be you in that place does that make sense yeah. And so many of these things you know i hear from people all the time and eventually you know they'll get it and they'll they'll write to me and they'll say wow i finally got it <laughs> took me three years to get them here you know mm -hmm. if you do take proverbs 10 22 and you put it in your mouth you will begin to see yourself differently and it will convert you it will transform you into the thing said not by your own power but by the power that's in that word and the power of the kingdom that backs it up then you'll be like me telling everybody to do this daniel chapter 6 verse 3 then this daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm an excellent spirit was in him what kind of a spirit do you have in in you a very excellent one he's the holy ghost yeah. the one you're attempting to speak in agreement with daniel was preferred above the presidents how far does this word go see this is the thing i i, I wrestle with this all the time with people it must just be a fantasy to them because they've not spoken it enough to have it convert them into something else they've not spoken it enough to have it convert them into something else my power supersedes all known natural power through what i'm talking about speaking god's word is god's word above all known natural power yes. is the kingdom of god does the kingdom rule over all that's why he says you've got to come to this knowledge your kingdom will be assured and sure to you when you come to this knowledge that his kingdom rules over everything yeah. my power supersedes all known natural power or otherwise governmental power economic power scientific power the kingdom rules over all a good example would you be okay with a good example a good example would be the healing word of god in your mouth by jesus stripes i was healed sickness cannot stay in my body first peter 2 24. when i put god's healing word in my mouth i begin to partake of the power that's in that word and then the kingdom power behind that word heals my physical body how many people have been healed and the scientific community sits there and looks at you like that's not possible mm -hmm. because his kingdom rules over all his kingdom that you are walking in and speaking from supersedes the known natural power or kingdom genesis 26 says isaac sowed in the land and there was a famine in the land now nobody else was telling Isaac to sow in the land but he had a vision and he saw himself sowing in the land so he did it on the word of God mm -hmm. and the, the word says that he reaped in the same year a hundredfold mm -hmm. and became wealthier than anybody else in the land but he saw it first and 
he superseded what the financial community said mm -hmm. couldn't be done if you believe the prosperity scriptures put you in a different class a class above the presidents we believe and speak say I believe, I believe. And, speak. and speak you'll see how to do it and you will see yourself doing it worship the Holy Ghost and walk with him in the earth by saying his words and you will leave an inheritance not just to your children but to your children's children thank you Holy Ghost for blessing these people that have had ears to hear and that word goes down into them and causes them to rise up into a new being a wealthy being one who overcomes all the things that are in their way we thank you Holy Ghost for raising up people in this generation of which we are all a part of it we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus name amen. amen if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I worship you I walk with you in the land of the living by believing and speaking the blessing of you is on me and I am made very rich with no sorrow added I say it that way I see it that way in Jesus name Amen